This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Thanks for joining us on the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens, your host. And today we're going to cover uh, uh, several topics uh, and ending up with the Equifax breach. So stay tuned for that. Until then, let me introduce again my exceptional co-host, Mr. Andrew Lanning. Andrew, the security guy. Up, How's it going, brother? Aloha. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I like how it said Equifax breach only on the cyber underground. Only here. This is news <laughs> everywhere, by the way. So that was a thanks, Robert, for you know for for uh, giving us a. <laughs> The plug there, but uh, this is news is everywhere. Yeah, it's all over the place. Uh, thank goodness, because that's how we do our research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How was your week? It was like a uh, lightning bolt. I oh. Just, yeah, the older I get, the faster it goes. Did, did you get hacked into Equifax breach? Uh, you know what? I can't tell. <laughs> and and we're going to find out why. Ouch. Okay, later. Oh, show. that's part, of, the, that's part <laughs> of our discussion. That's part of our discussion. I'm supposed <laughs> to know the script, but I, I didn't read it. Sorry. <laughs> well, tell us what you've been doing this week. You've had a busy week. i tell you what. Um... So, you know, stemming off of last, this, we had the symposium last week, right? And um, we really, there was a lot of... Um, Let's tell our audience about the, the symposium. The symposium for Safer Why we put on. We had um, four sessions. One was for, um, like, commercial industry. Then we had a special session for the um, healthcare industry. Then we did a special session the next day for FedGov, uh, DOD. And then we did a special, another special session in the afternoon for our folks from the consulting A&E side of the house, right? And the cool thing was we were starting to get all our surveys posted, and everybody really enjoyed it. We're getting, we had like, you know, about 80% of the people said it was, you know, gave it a five, and the rest gave it a four. So I really, sat in on one of the presentations at the Pacific Club. is really, that's well done. Oh, yeah, it's that a good spot time. for it. I mean, the, the, I think the environment's really good. Um, but we were able to discuss um, at length, and I think introducing, I think no one knew or heard about the work that UL is doing on cybersecurity. Important. Because yeah. they're a standards organization. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the, the the FedGov went to NIST, and NIST came to them, and they talked to them, and it, they've been doing standards obviously for a hundred something years, right? NIST, uh, National Institute for Standards and Technology, another right. standards organization, right? Yeah. Came, and came to UL and said, "Hey, can you can you guys work on this problem where these these standards for developing these products don't really exist?" So you're involved um, with UL because you're in physical security, electronic security, and that's the underwriter's laboratory, right? right? Yeah, and they. So and how does that affect you and what you do in electronic security? So it, the so the issue in electronic security is that we've got products that have been being made pretty poorly. Mm. Um, our manufacturers use um, third-party, you know, services like Vericode, for example, to verify that the software's like okay software. But they've sort of igno ignored a lot of the, um, you know, what you might call security design principles and practices in their products that we would call cybersecurity. Th those, the way those. you handle passwords or uh, the ability to do a buffer overflow attack on the software. Yep, exactly. Like or, or, and even, um, even so far as their, their software by default may have a backdoor, pa a backdoor engineering password oh. written into it, or they might have uh, a port FTP port open for a you know, file transfer port open that you don't need to have open. And some of this is left over from when they were developing the product. Yeah. yeah and they forgot to clean that up. Sure. I, I, yeah. I gave them the example that, you know, we, uh, I started my talk actually by just telling everybody to think about it, the fact that, you know, 20 years ago, you know, Yahoo was the big search engine. And, right. you know, you were told, don't never trust someone you might meet on the internet, right? That was the, the thing. And, and you, of course, you were always told you never get in a car with a stranger. But today, you know, 20 years later, you, you, you use the internet to, <laughs> to call a stranger car. to bring his car to you to ride in it. <laughs> right. So, but it's no safer. Right. There's no more security there, not from, you know, from the passenger's perspective or the driver. Either one could be nuts and hack the other one up or whatever, right? And often are nuts. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so the, the security industry sort of had the same issue in that all this product got developed on the, on the you know, it got onto the, onto the networks in the mid-90s. And the customer said, this is great, give me more features, give me more features, give me more features, make it cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. So, you know, that, that, that value, just like Uber brings you value and, yeah. and, and a lower cost, uh, is what the consumer asked for. And so the industry gave it to them. Right. But we, we left something out. <laughs> Security, like right. cyber security, and right? they all thought they were doing it right because they had a username and password assigned mm -hmm. to the device. But simple attacks against, say, like webcams, a wireless webcam, you keep knocking it offline, and it will keep trying to connect. And every time it does, you get something like Wireshark, another, you know, tool to do a packet analysis, and you can grab all those packets and do 
an analysis of what that username and password is. It just keeps sending out trying to yes. reconnect, and eventually you'll hack it. And those those devices are are insecure because of that. Sure, and 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 there's a, a lot of vulnerabilities that sort of been pointed out by our friends at Black Hat and a lot of these symposiums that have put on and attacked these devices and shown how how just how vulnerable they are. And we've had. I think 80,000 camera botnets DDoSing the, the DYN, <laughs> that's right? right? That's right, that's right. They use refrigerators yeah. and, and webcams yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the DVR boxes sure. that you have if you're a cable provider that you have no control over, yeah. but that are sitting at your house sure. and they're on your... And they're tied to the internet. internet. Yeah, and they're tied to the internet. What did you say after the last Black Hat? You, you went to the <laughs> arsenal and you said, that's it. There's no, the whole world's, the world's world, broken. It's all broken. But, but <laughs> there's nothing we can do. It's just broken. It was scary. <laughs> so, so anyway, I, but I got to introduce this idea, and I think a lot of the the folks that sat through those sessions didn't know. So, sh talking about UL and UL has uh, the 2900 series of standards. You know, the very first one is software, and that is already it was published. A while, uh, I think we published it earlier in the year, maybe in Q1. It's already been adopted by ANSI, which is the American National Standards Institute and it's going through ISO now. So, you know, we're going to have soon an, an international standard. ISO, International Standards Organization. Organization, yeah. <laughs> so we'll have this so that, you know, the because a lot of these manufacturers, obviously, they make product that ships all over the world. Tyco, in, in my industry, you know, United Technologies, these are huge companies, they sell product globally. So you need something that uh, meets the International Standards Committee's you know, a guidance um, uh, criteria. Super important, because you do yeah. use these in devices to protect yourself and your business. Sure. And if they're vulnerable, you've just added a way for people to break into your sure. personal space or your business. Well, this is really important that they follow these standards. Yeah. And I, and I think the consumer, once they're educated, like you said, is going to be looking at the product label saying, do you comply? Yes. And if you don't, I'm going to go buy yeah. another product. And, and if they didn't know about it, right, so this is the first they're hearing. And and so the interest, the way you all set it up, so you've got this, that's the general requirements in software, but there's a, a, a dash two series for your healthcare devices, right? And then a dash three series for the electronic security. And uh, uh, two, two, I think two dash three is the uh, industrial control systems. And they're going to go further with the IoT, and they'll, they'll keep working on so all this stuff. Explain the industrial control systems that people might not understand. PLCs, oh, SCADA controls, things like that. Yeah. So the um, you, you, utility companies, um, you know, people that are moving fluids. Think of water. Think of uh, petroleum, like pumping from a, a, a storage tank out to an aircraft, for example, or from a refinery to a storage tank, or from the tanker offshore, you know, into a refinery. For so. So folks that are moving fluids, folks that are moving um, uh, electricity, folks that are moving energy also use PLCs, uh, programmable logic controllers to handle. These are uh, really, it's an interface between high voltage monitoring equipment, high voltage devices that are out there in the field that are m maybe measuring for pressure or measuring for flow or, or measuring for temperature right. and things like that. So, um, you know, and these are talking back via, via IP back to software. So you really need some kind of device in there in the middle that can separate that high voltage world from the low voltage world. And that's where the PLCs come into play. And um, they typically use, you know, ladder logic or they're, they're, you know, they're different types of manufacturers that make these things, Allen Bradley, General Electric, folks like that. But they're, they're pervasive in controlling our world. And they're not like Windows or anything. This oh no, no, it's, logic. yeah, it runs its yeah ladder logic. Very simple s code that just do that one job, oh, report yeah. that one feature, move this one thing there, yep. open a door, yeah. close the door, and whatever. They actually write, and if you've seen the interfaces written to them, if you've ever been to like a pump house for the wastewater treatment facility or something, you'll see all these. They actually have a graphic. It'll look like a little pump spinning around in a direction. It'll be measuring perhaps its RPM and its flow rate or something. And the software that you write actually has. Uh, discrete data coming off of that particular sensor that's being translated through the PLC back out to the software. And so it's really cool. So the, you have a war room or something, you see everything in your... Yeah, and they build all this, system. but that's all built in software. You know, the PLC sort of keeps you separated from all the sensor devices out there in the field. So I industrial control systems are really one of the very first ones that UL worked on. So that has also been published now. Um, and I saw the DHS recently released, uh, I've got the site here, it's ICS CERT VLP. Uh, this is this is the first instance where DHS has gone and issued a training of course. There's like 12 courses in here. Specifically, all of them are around I ICS industrial control systems. It's super important again because industrial control systems, those controls, as simple as they are, if they're affected in any way, they could report the wrong information, close the wrong door, move the wrong fluid, 
lock something, unlock yeah. something, flood the gates. And if, if that's a critical infrastructure or there's energy involved, you could be in real trouble. Sure, yeah. grids shut down, pumps blow up. Um, one of the great ways to shut down a city is to blow up the wastewater treatment, right? I mean, <laughs> imagine if the wastewater treatment, wastewater treatment, you know what I'm talking about, right? When, you're t when you can't use the toilets anymore in a city, and say that goes on for a week or two, you've got massive, massive problems. Right, uh, epidemics, yeah. cholera, whatever the disease. And so, what, is. what was fun? So then, so so we got to do that stuff last week, and then uh, just this this week, um, the Chamber of Commerce hosted a really great event just upstairs here from our studio, and um, we had some folks there from the NSA. Uh, actually, the director of the NSA from Hawaii was there. Um, uh, CS, CISO from one of our uh, large local banks. Uh, one of the small business providers was in town. Was up there. Um, and then one of the larger sort of R&D kind of companies that's out here in, in Honolulu working for the DOD was up there to, t and this was all about cybersecurity. Oh, good. And uh, it was great to hear the, uh, the NSA director get up there and talk about some things that I think not, not everyone knows. Um, now you were telling me this, the NSA is working with two other organizations in the federal yeah. government, very close knit organizations, right? They're starting to share information and provide guidance to the consumer and to small and medium businesses, right? Yeah, and, and I think it, it hasn't, I don't know if people know, like if you're out, kind of outside those circles of like the Federal Law Enforcement Foundation or mm -hmm. the, if you haven't been through the, the FBI has like a Citizens Academy, and if you're not around these government groups, you know, you may think they're very discreet. Uh, and the NSA, of course, everyone sort of knows, you know, the, the, the National Security Agency, right? Everyone yeah. thinks, wow, they, they, they just give us all the information that we need. They have it all. They know it's, it all. I mean, they're the best in the world. That's I mean, the organization from the Tom Clancy novels, right? You sure, sure. The NSA, the NSA right? right? Everyone knows the NSA. And, and, you know, the NSA really works for the executive branch of government and then for the DOD, right? So they're, they have lanes that they have to stay in. He, and he explained that. Um, and the FBI really stays in those investigative lanes for crime. Um, now, the third one is Department of Homeland Security. And the third is the Department of Homeland Security, which okay. came up again, right? So I was just talking about how they've got this great training out for ICS, uh, for the Industrial Control System community in cybersecurity. And the, and the director was trying to explain to everybody, listen, when you, he goes, people come to me all the time and want me to say, you, we know you have all the answers, just tell us what we need to know. But he, that's really outside of his lanes, talking to the community, right? So he was able to share with us how they have their, their own, as you go up the chain, they're all married quite tightly when it comes to cybersecurity, keeping the economy safe, all those things. So when you ask the DHS, hey, what should I do for cybersecurity? You're getting the best that the NSA has and the best that they know filtered down through the DHS for commercial sector, you know, for example, or critical infrastructure. You know, the DHS really has guidance in each of those sectors. There's 16 different um, sectors recogni recognized by the National Infrastructure Protection Plan, the NIP sectors, we call those, of which even your commercial buildings are those multi-dwelling units are because they protect people live in them right and those are subject to attack just like anything else a mall for example subject to attack just as a utility company may be or a petrochemical facility so it was refreshing to hear him sharing and you know i think i think for the folks in the room they were all cyber concerned you might say most of the folks in the room I, you know we know sort of the it community around town and uh, many who work in cybersecurity. you know they were if they if they had, weren't in touch with InfraGuard or some of these other federal agencies very yeah. often, then I think they had a good explanation of what government's doing, you know, why they're doing it the way they're doing it, and, and actually how much free help is available. You're really not alone. You really don't have to make this up. You don't no reason to be scared anymore. We've talked about that. You know, the thing is, we now know what to do to work on our, our cyber maturity. Uh, regardless of what business we're in, and if you don't know, pick up the phone, call DHS. Uh, they're in town. They they can come. They're authorized to come and do assessments for you. There's now grant money available to small business for and some you of these do things. This because the the community, we work together as a, a more of an organic unit in this yeah, country. Yeah, we have if, to. If you instill panic, if you interrupt the business flow, if you interrupt the economy and the financial sector, you can crash a whole country and send us all into chaos. It's a oh, very yeah. delicate balance in this country. Yeah. Okay, we're going to come back and talk about more fun stuff really soon uh, here on the Cyber Underground. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay safe. Aloha. Welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investing, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you Tuesday.
Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m. and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Aloha. I'm Tim Apachaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show's dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apicella. Thank you. Welcome back to Cyber Underground. As you may have guessed, the country is not in panic and we have not crashed as of yet. And Andrew's <laughs> going to give us a little bit more information on that. So we were talking about the whole country working as an organic unit and all yeah. the small and medium and large businesses, we all have to keep working. We need business continuity, the economy, the financial sector depends on confidence in the system. Yeah. And if that's interrupted, we can go into chaos. And we were discussing this earlier oh, with a friend just, just a moment before the show that uh, if, even if the United States credit rating is degraded even by one level, uh, in the multinational community. We pay more interest to our lenders. Oh. Therefore, we're tapping ourselves out. Our budget goes up and uh, taxes have to go up to compensate, all because of our credit rating, but that could be caused by some kind of a crash in our economy, confidence mm. in our so economy. So our, our confidence is, can, be, can be definitely shattered by you know, some sort of a major hack of a utility or something like oh, that. Oh, the you know? 2008 financial crisis, we just invested poorly. And there you it, go. It, so our credit rating dropped for a while. And when did we recover? Uh, or did we? We're still working on that. <laughs> they said it's going to be long and slow. <laughs> long so, and slow. So imagine some sort of a catastrophic, you know, in the global, you know, or, or a North American power outage, right? Oh, or, yeah. or dams getting opened up and flooding whole cities or some crazy stuff like that. So these are some of the concerns I think that, that we got to address. But there was a lot of comfort, you know, uh, I think, uh, at, least, at least from the NSA's perspective that, you know, we, we've, we've got a lot of intel out there. All the agencies are working on it. Again, you definitely want to get in touch with DHS. Um, if you have questions, go to their website, go to NSA's website. All of them will sort of point you to places we've talked about in the past. Mm. Um, the, you know, the National Institute for Standards and Technology at NIST has a cybersecurity framework and not new guidance for small business, the 800-171. Um, what is that? That's regarding controlled, unclassified information. Right, so. so how to handle you know, information that maybe you're working for the utility and you have a schedule of their uh, service, or the maintenance or something like that, that could perhaps be considered um, controlled, unclassified information. If I know when you're doing maintenance, maybe right after the maintenance, I want to come in and jimmy around with some stuff because I know you won't be back for another month. And that's obvious to know, but some people, they, they don't think their, their CUI is actually CUI. Yeah. It's, a CUI can become CUI if you have an aggregate of enough of it it creates a threat. Yeah. So if I have the floor plans to an entire military base because I'm oh. a janitor, I know exactly where everything's stored because I can kind of piece out, okay, this, this has thicker walls. Mm. There must be something important here. This is really close to this other structure. This has a lot of space. There must be some big military equipment here. And that, that could be a threat, just aggregating all that information. Mm -hmm. That becomes unclassified controlled information. Yeah, I think so. And, and, and there's, the good thing is that I, I do think that the commercial community um, especially if they were like never worked for DOD or hadn't been around that that's way of thinking you know the the, um, our, the NSA director d definitely talked about that that uh, defense in depth idea that co that comes out around you know you, there's really not a silver bullet out there you know you're going to have to layer security uh, cyber security in Seriously particular Seriously important right around you layer your security yeah. the username password just not going to protect you and the most important thing is train your users sure to be aware and and uh, you know many small and medium businesses don't think they're uh, a critical to keeping secure our nation when they sell, you know, nuts, bolts, and screws to, you know, one of the bases here on the island. Sure. But uh, the way into a big uh, target is through a little target. Ah. So I don't want to go like storm. a person. Right. So oh. I don't want to go storm in the main wall. Right. I want to, you know hook my donkey cart up and pretend I'm a vendor and walk through the front door there nice and go. casual, right? So I'll go and attack a small vendor that has some kind of network connection to the DOD, and that's my path in. Yep. I don't want to go storm in the gates. Or what about a small person? Like, didn't, didn't a whole bunch of people just get 
Didn't all their information just get made public this oh week? Oh my gosh! Through okay, a, let's talk through about a massive uh, so financials. Let's talk about the financial sector, right? You brought up yeah. how the 08 crash brought us down, right. and here Equifax, one of the four credit top three. major credit top three, yes, yeah, top major three. credit yeah. reporting bureaus, right? It gets gets loses all, through what, their all their records. Maybe yeah. 140 minutes. That's half the country. <laughs> Right or something. 143 million records. There could be duplicates of people in there, but uh, no, oh, that's, I see. that's probably close to 143 million. That's all the adults. Uniques. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. All the credit where everyone who's applied for credit ever. Yeah, and that's what a lot, a lot of people don't realize that you don't go to Equifax and say, "Here's all my information." You apply for credit. You apply for a loan. You apply for a credit card. All that goes to the credit agencies. All three of them. Equifax is one of them. Uh, if you go try to buy a car and you need a loan on that car. Well, there's your driver's license number, your social security number, your address, your age, your birth date. Everything that a hacker needs to become you Ugh. is there. And we were victims of this oh. with the Office oh, the of OPM. Pro yeah, the OPM hack, Office <laughs> yeah. of Professional Management, yeah, for the DOD security clearances when they got hacked and, and you know, they know my brother's name and where he lives, you know. Mm. It's, it's 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 a lot of in-depth information. And this one was uh, unique. It, I I believe what I read is that they think it's not uh, a phishing attack, which is usually the way how they get right? in, they get, they get around all the firewalls and stuff by sending phishing email attacks mm. with some malware attached to an attachment in an email or something. But this one seems to have been the website. It had vulnerabilities in the ah, website. Ah, so SQL or something. And they, yeah, they won't tell you how it happened, but I, I'm sure if there's a login because it was a WordPress site, um, this was probably a it sequel. was a WordPress site. That's what they're saying. The uh, Equifax was using a WordPress I site. I don't have. Uh, well, if you go now, let's put that website up there now. Equifax, Equifax Security 2017.com. This is to see if you are affected. Now, this website, I believe, is WordPress, and we found out there's only one WordPress uh, user on there. I won't tell you which one it is, but if you go on KrebsOnSecurity.com, you'll see. All these details this is a wonderful place. Uh, by the way, don't don't think that if you go there, you're going to get an immediate answer. What we found, uh, Brian Krebs found this actually, is that if you go there, you sign up, and you see if you're affected, you're going to get an answer. And then you, if you go on your mobile phone and you try the same uh, process, you're going to get the exact opposite answer. So one of, one of them will tell you you were affected, and the other one said says you have not been affected. So apparently, this is broken. Equifax is, is not doing the job. And in addition, there are three executives for the company that are already under investigation for selling stock in Equifax between the July or May July breach and the time which they uh, told the investors and the public that the breach had happened. So in the time they knew about it, to before they told the public and the investors, these three top executives sold shares and made money. Cashed in a little bit. They cashed before in. Before the stock dropped. Now, that was the, the major thing, right? The stock dropped 13% already. Today? Oh, uh, since, the, since, since the announcement? Since the announcement, it's gone down 13%. Well, probably more since we've been talking. It, it's taken down target. It's uh, this is what down. we're talking about. Uh, the, the financial community depends on confidence in oh, the financial and the community. The nation, the, nation's, the nation's economy depends That's on right. that same confidence. This You're is right. a system, and, and the only way the system works is if I have confidence in my army, my navy, my air force, my banks, my uh, branches of government, mm. that everybody's working. And when I think that's not effective anymore, I start to think as a person, how else can I protect myself? And that can lead to chaos. Gordo has an answer. <laughs> blockchain. Blockchain. <laughs> Everything's blockchain. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I would think uh, financial sector is surely adopting it. I mean, that's, you know, the, the backbone of that currency. Form right. What's what's of all these new crypto the financial sector now? Um, Ethereum. Ethereum. Yeah. yeah. You know, back. So so trust is like uh, done. What what's the word they use um, when it's you know it's federated across so many different people, right? It's so distributed. The, distributed. Yeah, so yeah. a distributed ledger. Yeah. So trust is no. I don't have trust is 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 in the it's in the the hashing of the token of, of their transaction, right? It's, there's a lot of encryption in blockchain. And that's going to be a tough one, right? Because uh, you know security, as you know, is a running game. Yeah, we're 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 doing security, but there's people right on our tail, and if we don't run at full speed all the time, someone's going to overtake us, and those hashes that encrypt our Bitcoin are going to get broken. Uh, we've already broken a whole, whole bunch of hashes. Like MD5 was broken in the 90s. We have SHA1 was already broken. Um, now we're up to what SHA512. Yeah, or, well, they're, they're, I saw that they're all using they're using AES256. Oh, okay, the for, advanced encryption for Bitcoin, standard. right? Okay, so. 
you know, it uh, won't take much of a quantum computer to uh, crack that void. Well, our quantum say. computers are an interesting game for the, those of you out there in, in, the, in the world wondering what the heck a quantum computer is. Well, uh, a quantum computer can use photons instead of electrons to uh, measure the state of any object. So instead of a one or a zero, a photon can actually be both at the exact same at time. At the same time. So if I'm asking a question from a computer who's like, like my Mac here, uh, it's ones and zeros, it's electrons. So I have to test every single uh, possibility one right. at a time. It's either that or that. Quantum computers can take all the possibilities and test them at the same, same time. Same time. So imagine. So the speed, the, the speed, speed of computing is massive. And increased. not much power to do it. It's Isn't all awesome? photons, right? That's incredible. And we have uh, quantum computers actually in production in two private companies right now. Sure. And I believe IBM. Is and I think the criminal it. community, if we keep you know, paying our ransomware, that they're gonna they're gonna be buying the first one. Yeah. To break the rest of our encryption. <laughs> Fortunately, you know, the, the last I heard, the Navy and the Marines were already working on quantum encryption. Yeah. Well, and so in China, apparently, right? That, they've that announced was, they've announced that they're gonna have a comm network up on uh, that's quantum encrypted. Yeah. It's be the most secure communications the quantum network. Quantum network. How's that? Wow. And. and <laughs> <laughs> we're going way off. Oh, we're at least just saying AES 256 <laughs> isn't going to last forever. No, so, you know, there'll be a point at which the you know the blockchain have to change its hashing, right? I'm sure they can just make them longer, right? They can but make it's, them longer, it's slower, and, and it process. won't matter because you know if we're using quantum technology, it doesn't matter the length. Oh yeah, right? yeah. You just it's the method, mm -hmm. and and we get back to uh, you know protecting your assets, protecting your home. Um, one thing doesn't do it. Like you said, there's no silver bullet. You have to yeah. have a method to protect yourself. There's several layers you have to go in. You go into your building. Your building has a man trap, right? Uh, mine does, yeah. Yeah, so you go inside. You have to enter the first door and be authorized, and then you have to stand there and be recognized before you can enter the second door, right? That's just one layer. And when you get inside, you have an ID badge, I would assume, right? Yep. Everyone's got to have an ID badge. You see someone wander in the hall, and they said, they say, uh, no. where's the restroom? And if they don't have a badge, you escort them to the front, uh, right? Or out the in. back, one way or the other. <laughs> Yeah, uh, layers, and, and I don't think people understand that. They put that router, that Wi-Fi router into their business, and, and they just say, oh, yeah. you know, username and password, I'm done. Yeah, the, you know, the Cisco puts out their threat of the week, the vulnerability of the week, and there was, a, uh, I think this week it was an AT&T device, um, Sharknado, <laughs> they called it. it was, so it was this, uh, some AT&T Aris routers. These, you see these, they're common home routers for distributing either fiber-connected, uh, um, you know, internet to your home, or your business, or cable connected. So the, these these manufacturers have some vulnerabilities in these products. That was the, you know, most touted or most seen attacked vulnerability this week by Cisco. Wow. In North America. And well, ladies and gentlemen, tune back in next time. We'll be here next week discussing stuff like this again to keep you safe. Uh, I'm Dave Stevens. This is Andrew, the security guy. Aloha from the Cyber Underground. <laughs>